Hey there everyone, it's Val and welcome back to Pathfinder. This is the spaceship, the one that I wanted to show you yesterday, but that, well, I couldn't because I was stuck way out in the boonies with, in a mine. Well, this is it. This is where you start. Never mind those heads on the wall, I did not die at all. No, that, that didn't happen. Um, yes, you start here and these are chests that I've set up, and I'll show you what's inside them in just a minute. Um, well, you're probably wondering what all the, what the equipment is, and like I said in my uh, first end of the day tour, you are actually, you know, walked through with the quest book and given books, tell you know, you can read to tell you how, how things are working, but I will tell you a little bit just to, you know, to get your feet wet, if you would like to get your feet wet. All right, so RF tools let you create worlds. It's much like Mistcraft in that uh, instead of having Mistcraft pages, you have items called dimlets that you use to build the worlds with. And that's in fact what I have in all these chests is a sorted bunch of dimlets. And they do things like let you create biomes, uh, have um, so this is like your base page of biome, and then you can apply a controller to it, which will affect how the biomes uh, function. I don't know how all these different ones work yet. I'm still very much newbie myself. I'm uh, up to my knees in, in, in learning, and I'm sure I'll be over my head soon. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but basically, uh, you put together, I'll, I'll just show you one that I, whoops, that's not where it is. I'll show you one that I've done. Okay, so here's a realized dimlet. That means that it's been put together. And you put that in something called a dimension inscriber. And I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to put it in, I'm going to extract it because I want to show you what I put into it. Unfortunately, it won't be uh, as um, neat and tidy as the one that as I had put it in. Um, but there. So these are the dimlets I put into uh, define this world that I called Lapis World. So if you want to name the world, you should do it here before you uh, take this out. Um, I put in a default controller for the biomes, and then I put in a number of biomes that I had at the time, and it, the world came out pretty cool, I think. Then uh, I won't go through and explain these all, because like I said, that's what the the books uh, and, and the quests and everything is supposed to help you do, but basically when you put together uh, the description of the world that you want to create, you want to put the effects before the thing you're applying them to. So for example here I have a material, lapis lazuli block, and I'm applying that to the features orb. So I have a world where I have big orbs of lapis lazuli. In fact, that's the world I was just in, collecting lapis so I can upgrade my pick to Fortune 3. And yes, that one, I got really lucky and got that one. It gives me an extra half heart, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, and you can set the time. There, there's so many things you can do with it. Uh, I won't, like I said, I won't go through them all, but what, what you do is when you built what you think is a, a, a world that you want, you hit store and it puts it on and this becomes a realized dimlet. Now I've lost the name but I can put Lapis World on here again because it is going to be the exact same world. I have the exact same dim, uh, dimlets in here which means that it's going to create the it's going to reference the exact same world. So if I use this and put it in the create world thing it's not going to create a new world it's just going to take me to the one that I've already created. Uh, you ha have to change dimlets in order to create a different uh, world to go to. Which I thought was pretty cool because if for some reason you wanted to recreate uh, the world so you could, could get there, um, you can do it. Now these are the things I'm not familiar with because we are given, uh, as you might have noticed, this is a creative dimension builder. In Pathfinder we are in peaceful mode and basically you aren't charged for some of the, the energies that you would be if you were making this 
these worlds in uh, another mod pack, for example, uh, Phoenix Reborn. Um, normally, you have to pay lots of energy for the worlds. Mistcraft, you paid in instability. Uh, in RF tools, you pay in power. And it uses a lot of power. You use a lot of power to create the worlds, and you use a lot of power to keep them running, uh, to transfer, transport yourself back and forth between them. If a world runs out of power, when you're in it, you die. So power is very important. Pathfinder, uh, because this mod pack is basically, its primary purpose, as I understand it, is to basically introduce you to the wonderful world of RF tools, uh, dimlets, and worlds. So to further that end, the actual creation of worlds doesn't cost you anything, hence the creative dimension builder over there. And you don't pay to keep the world open. So once you you're in that, uh, created the world and have transported yourself there, you don't have to worry about running out of power and you getting killed because of that. Um, which is, is nice. <laughs> <laughs> you do, however, pay power in order to transport back and forth. And in fact, I will show you one of the things that I learned. I was told, I forgot, and then I relearned the hard way not to forget again. So I will sh talk about that in just a moment here. All right, so you're probably wondering what these are. Uh, I'll get to those in a moment as well. All right, so that was the, the creative dimension builder. Oh, actually, I should show you. So... If we are going to make uh, a dimension, we would put this in here. Now, this shouldn't create a brand new, like you can see that went to 100% immediately. Uh, in a regular um, mod pack that where you pay power for creation, you would see it slowly being created. Now, it shouldn't have created a new one because this is the same set of dimlets. Now, you can tell uh, if your world has been created when you go to the dialing device. And yep, I don't have an additional entry, so it just recreated Lapis World. Lapis World should still be referring to the same world that I created before. I don't think it refreshes it. I might be wrong. I guess I'll find out later when I go visit there again. Uh, and again, I don't know the tabular creation matrix and the screen. I think you need these, as well as the screen controller. I do not know how they work together because that wasn't really, that hasn't been explained, at least not yet, in uh, the quest book. Because I'm, I'm really new to RF tools. I've only dabbled in it very, very briefly in uh, Phoenix Reborn. I'm going to learn a lot more about it, but I figured learning too much would kind of uh, not help test how well this mod pack is teaching you about it. So I... I I deliberately didn't learn very much. All right, so dialing device, otherwise known as a DHD from Stargate SG-1. <laughs> uh, so the matter transmitter, this is basically your from des uh, uh, list, and this is where you're going to. So obviously you can only come from one place because you're in the place you're coming from. And you can tell which one you're currently in because it always says RF Tools Dimension right here. And these are just the IDs for the other ones. And I want to show you something that I learned a little bit ago. So the, the matter transmitter. So I can change the name of this. I can call this Pathfinder. And just click outside it. Now if I go back and look at the DHD it now says Pathfinder Transmitter. Well, it would if it would show it all. So you can do that to change the name of both your the receiving one. So here it says Pathfinder. I could change it to uh, something else. And now when I go to the DHD, it's now called Pathfinder Yay. Apparently the exclamation mark is not in there, but I'll just turn it back to Pathfinder. Right. Now you'll notice that the e these have power. This is very important, this power. Um, that's why I've got multiple things here right now. I can't make uh, conduits just yet of any sort 
but um, yeah, I want to make sure that these have power because it would be very bad if they did not. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to quickly show you. When you're exploring, you're going to find these, these unknown dimlets. I think I showed them to you in my bag uh, in my previous end of the day tour. And what you do with those is you take them to your dimlet researcher, which of course uses some power to do this. You put them in here and then you take them out. Basically, you are researching alien devices, alien artifacts, and you are finding out what they are. So it's like opening a present every time you take one out. So I have a cha chaotic train dimlet. Saturation. Oh, that's a lovely dimlet. <gasps> that's lovely. That means I won't starve as quickly when I create, go into that dimension uh, that I put that in. So that's, that, that, I'm really happy about that one. <laughs> A digit five dimlet. Um, I think I will mention what these do. Basically what these do is you can add them to, like let's say uh, my lapis world, I decided I wanted to make another one just like it, but I didn't want it to be the same one. So this is the same one as the one I created before, but if I added a digit five or any other digits or more than one of them, it would change the signature of this dimension and it would create a brand new world uh, that was is distinct from the one I created before. So I could have two lapis worlds entirely separate by using these special dimlets, which I haven't needed to do, y do yet, but since we got one, I thought I'd uh, at least tell you what they're for. And uh, if I can find the box that they're in, here they are. You can see that you have quite a lot of different ones. Now, um, let me just put these away. Uh, where does that one go? This is effect, saturation two. That is a lovely effect. And terrain chaotic. Terrain is over here. All right, so we got, obviously I need to get a bigger box. So I've been uh, finding a lot of these in uh, various mine shafts and stuff. Uh, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of different ruin types, and a lot of them have chests. Not a, all of them do, but a lot of them do, and I've been researching them all. Uh, all the dimlets that I've been finding and filling up my boxes. Uh, something that I wanted to mention was if you take this and put this in here and extract them and reuse the dimlets, you don't have to worry. Your world still exists. You can still go to the world through the DHD. So you can reuse your dimlets if you have a rare one that you can't copy. Because some of them you can craft, some of them you cannot. Obviously the rare ones you can't. But uh, things that do pretty mundane effects, you can create those yourself. Uh, but the rare ones, obviously, you have to find. All right, I think that's everything I wanted to show you up here. So I think it is time to, t to show you the, the matter transmitter. Um, I keep wanting to put, I, I might actually swap where these things are. There might be a reason that it's located here, I don't know. But I keep going here for the DHD because that's where it is on the worlds. When you first go to a world, you will automatically have uh, on your landing pad a uh, matter receiver so you can arrive there. However, you will not have anything else. So with a f every time you go to a new world, you'll want to make sure you have a generator with you a method of powering that generator. In this case, it would be coal. Um, a sterling generator is obviously slight, is better than a survivalist, but uh, so you want a, a source of power. You want something to uh, feed power into that generator. And you want to take with you a matter transmitter if you can. The first world you go to, you won't be able to do that. You have to make them there. Um, but you'll want to make a matter transmitter and you want to make a DHD. Uh, you'll need those things to get home again. So just to let you know. So the way that you dial a world is you select your from, which obviously is there's only one place. And we're going to go to our first base world and you hit dial. Now I'm consuming power and, and I don't have a lot, so I'm going to dash here. Do not move. When you're standing in this beam, I, beam I've been warned, do not move. Now, as soon as you get here, go here. Select this and hit interrupt. 
so that it takes the beam away because if you don't do that it's going to be consuming power on you and you obviously don't need to leave the beam open <laughs> once you've arrived so if you look at uh, here you can see we used about 120,000 RF um, just to let you know if you don't have enough power to transport yourself with the, the, the transmitter you will die you will have a gravestone you can come back and get your stuff but you will die if there's not enough power that's where two of those heads that are on my wall in the spaceship that don't exist came from <laughs> the other one came from me falling out of a tree but I don't want to talk about that right so power very important very important make sure you carry lots of coal with you if that's what you're currently running um, off of and to start with you will be make sure you have lots that's why I have I actually restocked up in the spaceship but I had more coal on me in fact let's see how this is doing um, right let's give it a little bit more coal shall we it needs about four I think let's just make sure it's topped off there we go right so this was my first world that I came to it's a pretty nice one and uh, let's see where is where is the way down I had just had it yeah is that it yes all right not that I'd kill myself or anything I also have plans to have a nice uh, method of transporting myself here uh, but I have to actually I have the redstone now I just don't have the gold for the powered rails so over here where you see that tower of ice is where my first base is so this is basically what I did yesterday I haven't added much to it today um, okay so I'm trying to get sugarcane here I was told that I need to plant on uh, do this configuration uh, wheat on either side and um, sand in the middle so but they have to be fully grown before they really do that so we'll see how that goes I was I might have to put them on all four sides but it has worked for crossbreeding in the past just across like this yeah we'll see how it goes anyway so th this this is well it's not castle val exactly it's uh Heidi hole val I guess is probably the best thing I do like that tower I think that looks so cool now as it's getting night and as you will recall from my first video the night is very dark here um, you always want to have torches with you they're not as expensive as in Phoenix Reborn but you can only get one torch per coal so right now coal is very precious to me indeed and over here I have my smeltery my very basic tiny smeltery it's gonna be a larger one it's gonna go on the floor uh, but yeah I, I, I needed to upgrade my iron pick so that I could uh, get some redstone right well I think that's everything I wanted to show you today I have uh, probably uh, in fact I'm almost certain I have talked longer than I originally planned I hope you found this end of the day tour interesting informative and entertaining and I hope to see you in the stream sometime y'all take care now bye